Hey, it's Matt here, and today we're doing something a little bit different. Now, it won't be different if you like this video. We'll actually do one once per month, but right now, it's something a little bit different. So, wanted to do this video because I wanted to kind of subvert your expectations, like with the phone ringing. Subverting expectations with phone ringing during a YouTube video. That's awesome. But seriously though, because we're a channel that focuses on retro gaming, I'm sure that a lot of you guys would think that that's just what we play all the time. But actually, we might surprise you. So before we get to me, let's jump to a few other people who've been on the channel. Okay, uh, so yeah, this month I've been playing, well, Empire at War, um, the Awakening of the Rebellion mod. Um, Empire at War is the base game, it's Star Wars, and... Uh, a new mod that's come out within the last year or so now. Yeah, it's actually been almost a year now. Um, it's been updating constantly. Well, not constantly, but like regularly. Um, and it's a really fun tactics game. The base game came out in like 2010, but the modding community has kind of like revived it. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, a lot of new ships, new abilities, um, increased like uh, just the AI basically making it a bit more of a challenge. Um, there's like a main campaign for each of the main factions. They have, you know, the Rebellion, the Empire, and Pirates. Um, they, there have been talks about adding more to those campaigns. There's also a randomizer, so you just start out with like any faction, any planet, with any... It randomizes everything, basically. Um, kind of like how Pokemon and Nuzlocke runs do. And I think there's also some... I'm not entirely sure. There might... No, yeah, the online play, I think, is up and running. Um, so you can kind of play it with friends against AI or play together, that kind of thing. Um, I know there's... I think there's one other mode that they're thinking of implementing. Or something to that effect. So, yeah, I mean, I guess, I, I guess it's basically whatever whatever you consider done is when you've either played all the campaigns or you've played all the modes and you've beaten them on every difficulty um because there's three levels of difficulty there's normal hard and expert um i'm playing on hard um it it i used to have to play on normal thankfully i got a little bit better at it last year so now I can actually play, because hard is kind of the middle ground difficulty for this. <laughs> Whereas expert would be like your traditional like hard mode. And the AI is unforgiving. <laughs> and yeah, you know, you basically get to command your own fleet from the biggest capital ships down to the smallest starships. And it's a lot of fun. You get to do space and ground battles. Um, and yeah, you got the whole galaxy out in front of you. So that's definitely a lot of fun. I've also been trying to finish up Super Metroid on the SNES Classic. Um, I really love Metroid. It's funny. I I love it aesthetically. Like I, I like the games. I like how they play. Don't get me wrong. But I've always had this fascination with you know space and like the soundtrack and just Samus as a character and like. You know, the, everything in the background that's going on supposedly with Space Pirates and Federation and stuff like that. I kind of wish there was almost like a novel series or like a manga series. And I think there are manga series, but I don't know if there's anything like really like official. Like Nintendo's been like, yes, we want this as part of our franchise. Um, I think that'd be really cool. But yeah, anyway, Super Metroid. I know I'm late to the game, um, but I've been having fun with it. Um, I definitely love playing Samus. Um, definitely need some more love. You know you're late to the party when you're playing a game on something called a classic edition. I'm like, I'm a living embodiment of Slowpoke meme. And one of the last ones I've been doing this month specifically, uh, Super Mario RPG. Another one, yes, on the SNES Classic. Uh, yes, I know I'm late to the game. Um, but... I've heard so many good things about people playing this in their childhood and later days. Um, so I finally have it, finally got around to thinking about it. Because I, I want to try and complete things, but then I just kind of picked it up one afternoon. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to play this today. So I did. And I'm not really that far in it yet. Um, 
but I am really enjoying just the oddity that is Mario as an RPG. Granted, I've, I've played like Superstar Saga and all those, which are Mario RPGs. Um, but this, uh, like, Legend of the Seven Stars kind of felt it came before that trend of, yeah, let's put, you know, Mario in RPGs. That's, 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 a, that's a thing now. That can be a thing now. It kind of felt like it was at that point where it was like, whoa, this is, whoa, this is weird. I, I, I felt like I was just, I do the jumpies and the side scroll and that, that was Mario. And now here we are with Gino, still not in Smash. Pour one out for the boys. So the games I've been playing this month mostly has been Pokemon Go. That usually takes up most of my uh, gaming time. Specifically, we had the uh, Colossal Discovery event, which I couldn't play. But then they uh, they ended up switching out the stuff. So even though I so I paid for it, now I can still get the Regigigas out of it, which is awesome. That means nothing to anybody who doesn't play Pokemon Go, but that's fine. I have also been on a Mario Kart kick again because uh, I picked up the mobile game when it came out and um, I played it like a lot for the first two days or so. And then, but like I had, the driving mechanism wasn't really for me um, and I'm not big into like the, uh, you know, paying for or having to earn the rubies to get the characters I'd rather just you know it, it was like the whole mechanism wasn't for me so I also then swapped back to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe which is my favorite of the Mario Kart series I'm still trying to unlock everything three stars on that uh, I'm currently almost done with the 50 cc's and I'm about halfway through with the 100's um because I just found out that apparently if you race on 100 and you get three stars, it will count for the 50 also, which would have saved me a lot of time if I knew that earlier. But that's okay. Let's get my practice in. And I've also been playing this uh, Cartoon Network math chip game on my phone. And I know I play a lot of mobile games. I work a lot. And I don't always have my Switch on me. So that's how I get my gaming in. It's fine. Um, but I play this really cool Cartoon Network matchup game, uh, where you're, like, earning different, um, uh, eatery establishments, and you have to, like, level up your characters to be able to go fight these sprites and stuff. It's like, uh, Puzzle vs. Dragons, that type of, uh, gaming, uh, setup. But I really like it, and it has had a lot of opportunities for me to keep grinding over the past few months so i'm still playing on that pretty hard and that's it those are those are the games i've been really focusing on for the past month so these days i tend to play more mobile games um you know i don't really have i'm not home very often i don't really have the time that i used to to play video games to play through uh, byzantine 90 hour uh, rpgs uh so now it's just things i can play on the go you know games i can play during my 15 at work um and uh, there's two major ones that I've, been, that I've been playing this month, and one of them is, get ready for it, Opera Omnia Dissidia Final Fantasy. Basically what it is is that it's, it's based on the Dissidia fighting games uh, for Final Fantasy, but uh, instead of a fighting game, it's a turn-based, you know, traditional turn-based RPG to get your, you know, your turn-based fix. And uh, it's, you know, it's a lot of fun. You know, there's... Final Fantasy mobile games are, are uh, a dime a dozen, but I like this one in particular because there really isn't, at least not that I've experienced that, I've been playing the game almost daily for about eight months now, and there really is no paywall. Like, you can, you know, I haven't put any actual money into the game and have been able to consistently enjoy it. Uh, I think the only real thing that real money involves is like getting alternate costumes for certain characters uh giving you more gems for better chances at rare draws for the weapons but you de and, and that's the other thing too is that the game is very gen generous with its premium currency which in this case is the gems uh you know whenever there's an update or a new event they'll throw you a, a few hundred just for just for playing and i you know that and that that's a good you know kind of a first taste is always free type setup where it keeps you coming back so it's pretty amazing because it it, it involves the entire final fantasy multiverse it's characters from all 15 numbered games plus 
tactics plus uh, type zero, a lot of the side stories. Uh, so you can basically, you know, at this point enough, and, and new characters are released every, uh, I, I would say every every two weeks or so, there's a new character event and a, a new playable character becomes available for a limited time. And then if you miss them, uh, usually uh, within a few months later, they, you know, they come back and you're able to get them again. You just got to wait it out. Uh, but at this point, you know, the game's been out for like about a year and a half. And there's a uh, you know huge roster. You can basically put together your dream uh, dream Final Fantasy party, and uh, it's uh, yeah, it's definitely a lot of uh, a lot of fun. And it's fun you know seeing the character the characters from the different games interact. To tell you the truth, I like the the multiple character interactions from this you know little mobile game as opposed to the, the actual Dissidia games because they get to do fun stuff you know with, with sets you know Tifa talks to Setzer about how he would probably enjoy the gold saucer uh, Zach has everybody doing squats until uh, Tita and, and Cypher uh, pass out so fun little little uh, interactions like that and um, the other the other big one is uh, and I know I'm gonna go real unique with uh, with this one here is uh, Pokemon Go you know I, I uh, I've been sinking my teeth into it I, I'm, I'm definitely not the most knowledgeable or uh, you know, knowledgeable player, or, or have the most finesse, but I do enjoy it. It gets you out and going around, gets you exploring your neighborhood, and um, you know, it, it gets you. Is that it gets you out, and gets it gets you moving because you never know what you're going to find. And uh, I said this is really this is my only exposure to Pokemon. It, I, it's a social thing because I know a lot of different people that play. Uh, I've never played really at any length any of the other Pokemon games. I didn't watch the TV show, so this is really my only exposure. Uh, so I like to piss the hell off out of people by coming up with my own uh, silly names for everything. But uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. And uh, I I will admit that I have pumped a, a modest amount of money into that one. But again, it, it's it's. Pokemon Go has a bit more of a paywall because, like I said, you pay for additional inventory space for extra Pokemon, uh, extra space for uh, for Pokemon. And if you want to play the game regularly, you probably will need to, you know, to upgrade it at, at some point. Um, but it's, uh, you know, again, if you're a fan of the uh, series, of course, it's it's great for me. It's just a great great way to uh, get up and get around. And, and uh, again, there's a social aspect to it that I really enjoy. Uh, so that's and that's really been it. Not odds are, if you ask me again in a few months, I'm probably going to be pay, be playing basically the same things. But uh, I think I'm uh, I'm focusing on the uh, focusing on the greats. So what am I playing? Well, first things first. I don't want to focus on games that I'm just playing for, let's say maybe 20 minutes or an hour or so, just to do four footage for the channel that I never really get back to. I'm doing games that yes, I'll do for the channel, but are meant for either reviews or even some for let's plays that go a little bit farther. So a few different games. One, I've actually just beat Super Mario Galaxy. Not 100% because no, that's actually very difficult to do from the looks of it. Very time consuming. Don't have that kind of time. But I have been playing Super Mario Galaxy. We actually started that let's play Anthony and I for last season of those guys play which was season five so that was a lot of fun i really did enjoy that um i i don't have a lot of experience with the wii as one might think because you think well matt you were like a teenager at the time wouldn't you have played the wii and i enjoyed it but it was actually at my dad's house and it was in the basement and he actually worked from home from the basement most of the time so i didn't really get the chance to play that uh, i really got the chance to play more of the ps2 and bits of the gamecube a bit more here and there so and of course you know jump back to childhood PS1 and uh, Super Nintendo but either way though so it's you know the uh, Super Mario Galaxy was actually a lot more fun than I thought it would be and there will be a review coming out in the near future and, and let's also, also note near future for me might be within the next five years either way though uh, Super Mario Galaxy so much fun really sad uh, for me personally that I actually ended up sleeping on this and I started playing this in 20 19. Now, uh, that's the first game. Second game is a little game called Saturday Morning RPG. So this is a game that was recommended to me by a contributor, contributor to the channel, I can say words, Satish Ram, and he told me about this game in like 2011 or like 2012. It was a while ago. Actually, no, we weren't friends until 2012. So he told me about this game probably in 2013, 2014, because sometimes he's late to the party as well. So it took me 
years to finally play this. It was $3 on the eShop. And sadly, it is technically incomplete. There's talk of more chapters. Basically, it's all episodic based. It is a, um, a turn-based RPG style game. Uh, your health resets every, at the end of every battle, so you might think that it's very easy, but they try to make the battles harder so that you have the ability to die in them. So, uh, a lot of cool extra fun stuff. Basically, it's set in the 80s. It's meant to be a tribute to every Everything 80s. So there are, uh, are references up the wazoo. I mean, you cannot go three feet without another reference. And I find that funny. Some of you guys might not. Uh, some of you guys might not really enjoy the humor. Again, I do. Um, and I thought that uh, it was a really fun game. Loved being able to kind of just immerse myself into this world. Uh, some episodes are better than others. Some chap basically they're known as chapters. Uh, some are better than others. Some are shorter than others. They were released one by one, and this is basically just a compilation. So I would say that the game does end in a way, not going to spoil it, but ends in a way that you could say it's the finale, but it really is supposed to continue on from there from what I've heard, and there has been an update in years. So either way though, $3 digitally on the eShop, Nintendo eShop for my Switch, why would I not get it? It was so much fun, I would definitely recommend it, and I thankfully I beat it, and so I just have to record a little bit more footage of some extra side stuff that I didn't really care to do, not within the main story, but just some extra stuff that I was like, well I beat the game so I'm good, but want to give you guys that extra stuff for the reviews so that is currently what I'm wrapping up doing so same thing with Galaxy by the way which uh, if you don't know I didn't really explain much of the story with Galaxy because I, I feel like you should uh, probably know what Super Mario is I mean it, you know uses the Wii motion controls um, a bit more it can give you some motion sickness now we're jumping back to Galaxy it can give you some motion sickness but overall, I really, you know, did enjoy it, as I mentioned earlier, and I would suggest that you jump into it if you haven't already. Now, uh, jumping to another game that I've just started and I'm really going to beat within the next week or so, River City Girls. River City Girls. Okay, so I have no experience with the, the Kunio uh, Kun series or the River City series. I have no experience with this. I've heard of them, but I haven't really jumped into it. I have, I, I maybe have played, even though it's technically adjacent, uh, I've played a few minutes of, uh, not even a few minutes, maybe like 20 or so of Double Dragon. But this game is so much fun. So it subverts your expectations. Instead of you being the two guys from River City Ransom who are going to try to save their girlfriends, you're two girlfriends that are going to try to save their boyfriends. And they kick so much butt. It's really fun. The soundtrack is amazing. I bought the physical edition from Limited Run Games. I have issues with them usually. I'll talk about it in the full review. By the way, there is going to be a full review of that coming as well, just like with Saturday Morning RPG. Um, but I have to say though, they really, uh, you know, they did not drop the ball here. They brought their A game. For 35 bucks, I got the game, I got a soundtrack, and I got a full manual. So, was not expecting all that, even though it was actually in the description box when I purchased the game. I just wanted a physical edition because digitally the game is also 35. And I'm not saying it's not worth it for 35, but it's digital. And I feel odd about paying that much for digital games, uh, unless they're a compilation. Like, I actually bought the Phoenix Wright uh, trilogy on the eShop. And uh, I'm not talking about that because I did play it a little bit, but not enough to fully say, like I'm playing it right now but I really do enjoy uh, of course the Phoenix Wright series as well and when it comes to River City Girls again I cannot recommend that enough the soundtrack is amazing I've can, the voice acting is also amazing um, it generally is so much fun that I, I will say though it's probably better to play it with a friend I've been playing it single player and it's it's been a it's been fun but I think getting a friend over would definitely help. So either way though, uh, definitely check it out. If you can't get it through Limited Run because I'm pretty sure they've sold out, yeah, I think they're available at Best Buy. So at least at one point they were. So I would suggest going to your local Best Buy, maybe calling up, see if they still have them. If not, definitely get it. Uh, I got it for the Switch. So either way, it's I think it's 35 digitally across the board though. Switch, eShop, Steam. I don't know if it's available on PS4. So if you like beat-em-ups, definitely check it out. And there's one more game. And this game, I'm going to pick back up again. I've played a little over an hour of it and I really enjoyed it, but I haven't had the time. I actually technically started it last month, but damn it, I'm going to play it this month. It is Astral Chains. I actually technically started that two months ago. Oh God, but I'm still gonna play it. Astral Chains is amazing. Again, played it for an hour, but I have fallen in love, but sadly, it is an unrequited love. It is, uh, no, it's a long distance relationship because I haven't had the time, but uh, I'm definitely going to check it out because 
The world is, I mean, it just looks so beautiful. Uh, you're basically, if you, you know, if you've heard of it, but maybe don't know too much about it, it's essentially JoJo's Bizarre Adventure mixed in with, some of you are like, I don't know much about JoJo though, Matt, that did nothing for me. Okay, so uh, essentially you work with these creatures that are bonded to you, that help you fight these other creatures that have come in through some interdimensional portal, and they've been doing this for a while now. That's the only world that this world knows. Everything seems to be dead from the world, really, other than this one rather large city. It might be a bigger nation, but I haven't gotten that far in the game just yet. And it's also been a while since I've uh, picked it up, but definitely going to get back to that because, dear God, this game is so much fun. And you better believe there will be a review of that, but it definitely won't be this month. Um, but I, I need to pick this, this game back up because it is so much fun. So... Those are the games that I am playing this month. Those are the games that I've even beaten this month. And you've heard everybody else's games as well. So the question, now the ball is in your court, person watching this video. What is your game or games that you are playing this month and maybe even beaten this month? Please comment down below. If you like the video, please remember to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification to get notified when we put out our videos. That's a thing I have to say to you. Because you know what you want. You want these videos. All of these. But you will not see them. Either way, love you all. Take care and tune in next time for another installment of this series. Next month. On this channel. Alright guys, so see ya. If you like videos like this and you want to help keep things going, you can donate to our Patreon. There are a plethora of tiers that help keep the lights on and that can help us tailor our content to your liking. All you gotta do is check out patreon.com slash tgproductions today.